Good day. Welcome to the RNN TMQ newscast. Today's newscast will be about the Nation of Islam, mainly pertaining to its time, 1950s era. The NOI was allegedly founded by Wallace D. Ford, also known as Farad Muhammad, Wallace Ford, Wally D. Ford, Wally Ford, and Wallace Farad. The organization spread the Islamic religion through the United States to black Americans. The group was said to be a black supremacist group preaching about the downfall of the white race. They hated them so much because they believed that because they had lost their color on occasions, they were lost originally. They also believed that intermarriage or race mixing be prohibited. Now, in the 1940s, they were put under fire by many Mus Muslim people and mosques that the NOI in, many shape, in any shape or form was not Islamic or Muslim. About this time, the NOI established around a dozen temples around the United States. The NOI would not really increase in size if not for the prominence of the civil rights movement and the induction of two members. Th those two members are Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, formerly known as Cassius, Cassius Clay, an Olympic gold medalist and three-time heavyweight champion. Although they faced many ups and downs in their history, they are still here today. Now, to Gary Smith with the weather. Welcome back. Our next story is about the famous rock and roll player, Chuck Berry. Miss Berry was born on the 18th of October, 1926, in St. Louis, Missouri. In his early life, he was inspired by Nat King Cole and blues player, Money Waters. While Chuck Berry was at Refor Reformation School, he learned to play guitar at 18 by his friend, Ira Ira Harris, who taught him many techniques which would be the root on how he played. In 1948, he was married to Thameda Suggs, had four kids, and was working at a factory before he got his first gig at a club. In 1952, he did his first show in a club and became very popular to even white people. It was said that at times that some of, some of his shows had had about a 40% white audience, with the rest being black. This is mainly because he, he blended country riffs with some lick, blues licks. Now, in 1955, Chuck Berry recorded his first album from recommendation from a famous blues player, player Money Waters. He recorded his records at Chess Records. One of the most famous songs on said album was Maybelline, called Ida May originally, caught the attention of chess, chess records and they decided to sign him. That summer, Maybelline was on the number five song on the pop charts, and number one on the R&B charts. He then released many other hits such as Brown Eyed Man, Too Much Monkey Business, Memphis, Sweet Little Sixteen, Roll Over Beethoven, Johnny Be Good, and many more. He wasn't just known for his music. He's also known for his showmanship on stage, where he would duck around. Here's a clip of what his set looks like. Sadly, in 1959, he had a streak of misfortune when he was sent to prison for having sex with an underage prostitute because of the, because of the Man Act. He was then sent to jail for the next six years until 1964, after the British invasion of rock and roll. After this, Chuck Berry continued to release five more albums, was, was in many documentaries and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, was arrested for tax evasion, and even founded an amusement park called Berry Park. Didn't only do this, he also pioneered the way for many other rock and roll artists, such as John Lennon, who said, if you try to give rock and roll another name, it might be Chuck Berry. Also such important figure as Jerry Lewis, who said, my mama said you and Elvis are pretty good, but you're no Chuck Berry. Also the Red Hot Chili Peppers, who said, Chuck Berry is a musical scientist who discovered a cure for the blues. Sadly, in 2017, he died from a cardiac arrest. Those, those thus ends the ode of the legendary rock performer. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day.